Nick, have you heard? Heard what? The Bishop and the Gator are in stores. Oh, I did hear that. Brick and mortars, baby. Yeah, they're available right now at Riverman Cigar Company and Lit Cigars, The Smoke Pit, Man Cave Cigars, Smokers Alibi, and our friends over at Max Smoke Shop. Way cool. You need to go to those stores and you need to get yourself a Bishop or a Gator. They're fantastic cigars. Why not both? Should be both. I'm saying. You can also get them at martinascigars.com. Check them out today. Coming to you live from the JRE Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studios, it's the Cigar Pulpit. You got that right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm the Bishop of the Burn, Nick, and with me, as always, Gator. And today, we're smoking a selection from Gator's Humidor. We are, actually. We are. A rare opportunity when I get to bring a cigar. Yes, yes. Normally, Nick won't let me get the cigars. He has to insist on buying them all himself. That is so not accurate. That is so not accurate. I sometimes wish you would participate more. (laughs) Sometimes or all the time. Uh, I mean, a lot of the time. Although, I'm going to end up with things like today. A shade-grown Connecticut. Damn straight. So today we're going to be smoking the Alec Bradley Medalist. It's the uh, 5x52 Robusto featuring a uh, shade-grown Honduran wrapper and a... uh, Honduran binder and Honduran and Nicaraguan filler. Okay, then. So, yes. We also have a uh, studio audience today watching the show live here on the Jerry Tobacco Aladino Mobile Studio on my lovely ex-wife's deck. Watching us live, it's Kristen. Hi, Kristen. We had a whole conversation off air about how she couldn't hear us when we were talking on the microphones. We had talked about doing the Ask the X today, but she said that we weren't ready for that. In reality, I think what it boils down to is you're not ready for the emotional <laughs> beating you're going to take for that. It is going to be a pummeling, I have a feeling. Yeah. Yes. So, Because really, seriously, if the two of you get together, it it's almost like a pack of wolves chasing a rabbit at that point, and I'm the rabbit. Yeah. Because you're just going to go into a frenzy. Well- and, and the next thing you know, I'm dead. And let's point out why we have the studio audience. She's here to crack the whip to make sure this gets done quickly because you have to mow the lawn. I do. And I, I am mean, doing everything I can to You're doing everything you possibly can to stall and avoid mowing the lawn. Well, I broke the lawnmower. <laughs> yes, you did. And now I have to go buy a new lawnmower. And you went searching for parts yesterday. You know, I went searching for a lawnmower yesterday. <laughs> so, okay, let me let me go into that before we light up here because I, I have a little bit of harshness that How I about, need to... No, 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 no. Why don't we go ahead... And cut and light up, and then you can get into that. Okay, fine. I think that's a much fine. If you I, want to follow that action sequence, that's fine I mean, with me. It is a cigar show. Valid point. <laughs> so, Let me get mine out of the cellophane. Uh, I knew it. I knew it. It's a robusto, Jeff. Yeah, but it's really in there. It's really not. It's really not. Why are you breathing so hard while doing that? Uh, It was a lot of work. God. Well, how about we go ahead and cut the cigar? And the official cutting is brought to you by Dan the Man Ponder over there at Riverman Cigar Company. I had a uh, wonderful time hanging out with uh, our boy Teddy over there at Riverman on Friday night. I really am. Yeah, he came into town. And I was out of uh, town. He came into town to meet up with some friends, and so we spent a wonderful time over at Riverman, and Dan, as always, gracious host, and showing him around the humidor, showing him all the little little treasures all over the place there. It was a good time. It was. Yeah. I, I talked to you guys a couple of times on the phone, but I was not able to be there. I was out of town, and I'll get into that a little bit later, too. We had a Teddy, really nice Teddy was weekend. able to stock up pretty significantly on the Martinez and the JRE Aladino cigars. Also got himself some of the Bishops and Gators. Got himself one more Bishop than Gators, though. Yeah, thanks, Teddy. I heard about that. <laughs> he got, him, <clears throat> got himself one more just just because I was the one present and not you. <laughs> so, you know. It was my daughter's birthday. I mean, on Friday? It was Thursday. We were out of town. You know, we took a trip. <laughs> yes, sack. Anyway. So, yeah, so guys, if you're looking for an awesome humidor and you're looking for a great 
1,500 square foot covered patio to sit out and enjoy this gorgeous, gorgeous weather, head on over to Riverman Cigar Company in Crestwood, Missouri. And if you're not from St. Louis or you're not swinging through St. Louis, you can always give Dan over there a call and he will put together a box of cigars and get those shipped out to you right away. That's Riverman Cigar Company of Crestwood, Missouri. So now it's time that we go ahead and cut the cigar. Darn right. I'm going to do a V-cut. I am also going to do a V-cut. So. You know what? I might do one. You know what? I'm going to take it up a notch. Oh, God. Because the way this this is really kind of an abrupt um, cap, if you know what I mean. It's not it's not rounded as much as some. And I didn't get very what you, deep. What are you talking about? It's not like a Neanderthal, but it's not. I don't. Yeah. It's a little stubby. So, I did the cross Maybe cut. Maybe yours. Mine is just normal. Yeah, I didn't get very deep with the V. So, I did a cross Leave cut. Leave it to you to have a stubby cap. Did you the know, cross cut. You know what I mean. Did the cross cut. Yeah. Double circumcision. Did the cross cut. Okay. I'm not circumcised. Dear God. <laughs> well, that's going to get added to the soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> Flaps up. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> okay. That might have been a little close to the edge. I'm, 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 un, I'm uncomfortable. I'm now. ready for takeoff. I'm uncomfortable yeah. now. All right. Cold, you know, the cold beauty dr- of it is Kristen's sitting here just staring at us. <coughs> cold. <laughs> I rocked the bishop. Oh, my God. You okay there, buddy? I need a little drink. I was a little verklempt. <laughs> a, a little choked up. All right. Cold draw time. Okay. God. <laughs> Tastes like pasta salad and Snickers. <laughs> Because you just got done eating pasta salad <laughs> Snickers. <coughs> Nick it, brought us Snickers. It's kind of creamy and sweet. Yeah, it actually is. Yeah. Yeah, you know why I had a Snickers bar? Because I haven't eaten anything today. And I felt that I was getting hangry. And I didn't want to go all Joe Pesci on you and just start, like, you yeah. know, snapping at you for no And reason. then I sat and begged him for the other half of yeah. the double Snickers yeah. until I you're got like, it. You're like, hey, hey. And then he just stared at it <laughs> until I just threw it at you. <laughs> It worked. Well, you can tell spring's out because bees. the bees are starting to return <laughs> here on the back deck. Boy, that does have a really unique, like, sweet, creamy flavor to it. That is really it is. good. It's a sweet, creamy flavor. Interesting. Well, there we go. Well, I'm going to Bradley Medalist. Light up this little guy. Okay. So. I'm right there with you. Do, do, do. We should alternate how we light so we're not just dead air. I mean, I've tried that before. And you know what happens? You don't say a friggin' word. <laughs> it's so true. Mm. All right. Now that I'm lit up here, what do you? Uh... Ooh, do the, do a retro hail. Okay. Because I did the uh, colder on the cold retro, and it was just like you said that sweet creaminess. It's got a little something. It does have a little something. But it's not really pepper, I don't think. No, it's not. It's there, but I don't know. Hmm. I'm going to do one more. Wow, what is that? Normally, I'd say pepper or spice, but it's something more distinct than that, but I can't put my finger on it. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you, but you know what I'm talking about. There is some sort of a like, spice there. And you know what? It's it, a specific. Well, um, so there's the Honduran and the Nicaraguan filler. Yeah. I'm wondering if that's that Nicaraguan kind of like slightly coming through there. Oh, maybe. But yeah, but I'll say, I'll say this. It's a really creamy, you know, smooth cigar. But um, so far, just in the very, very early stages, boy, you got to smoke this thing slow. Because I've got some runs going from. Uh, oh, do you? I don't. Some, taking some. Yeah, like slight. Very, okay. very slight. But yeah, if I were to keep puffing at this thing, this thing would be going all over the place. So You'd canoe it up? Yeah. So I need to. Fair enough. You need to take it a little slow. Can I bitch about Walmart now? Alec, Alec Bradley, medalist. Yes, yes. Okay. Let's go ahead and get to your harshness. So as I, I said yesterday, I messed up the mower. 
it, it it's seven years old, a push mower. I mean, we bought it cheap. It was 250 bucks. Okay. And so we've gotten a lot of good use out of it, but I left it out um, and it got, it got snowed on. And Chris is like, that's going to mess that up. I'm like, oh, it should be fine. I'm thinking, oh shit, it's probably not going to be fine. And sure and enough, it wasn't. Fine. I can get it to start, but it won't. I don't know if there's something like in the gas line blocking it, or the carburetor is catalytic jammed up or something. I don't catalytic converter. Yes, on there a, are on a lawnmower. Yes, what? I had to have mine fixed. I are you take, serious? I had to take it to the Jones boys in Belleville and have them replace it. I swear really? To God, there is a catalytic converter on a lawnmower. Oh God, we've lost our minds. So yeah. I won't tell you what used to happen to those back on the farm back in the day. Okay. Because I think it's illegal. Probably. Yeah. But anyway. No, I'm not saying my farm. I'm saying other farms. Other farms. Other farms. It was just a trick amongst the farmers. Yes, it kind of was. <laughs> it's called a mallet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Yeah, but I have no knowledge, no direct knowledge of that ever happening. Okay. I just heard anecdotal stories. I'm just telling you, there, is, the a feds catal- listening out there, there is a catalytic converter on a lawnmower. Fair enough. So... I decide, you know what, it's time. I want to buy a new one. I want to get a self-propelled because that's just a push mower. And, you know, oh, make my it... God, yes. You have yes. To. If you're going to not have a rider, you at least have to have a self-propelled. But it's the only exercise I get, let's be honest. So I don't mind. Even a self-propelled, you get some exercise. Okay. Well, I'm just walking around behind it at that point. It's doing all the heavy lifting. Well, yeah. But, so I mean, I go to rule I hate pushing a mower. I go to Rule King, and it was Easter. We're recording on Monday for full disclosure yes. for Tuesday's episode. So I go to Rule King, and God love them, they're closed. And I, you know what? I don't fault them for it. They let their employees no, have off. It was Easter. So I drove over to the Walmarts, and they're open. They did not let their people have No. Off. So I was going to reward them with buying something. It, wrap your head around that. <laughs> so I go in to the lawn and garden, and I walk in, and it's like, oh, I look up. And there's like a beam of light shining through the roof right under the lawnmower I want. They've got some regular little, you know, push mowers and stuff, but they've got the one with the bagger because I do a lot of composting, so I like to keep my grass for that. And it's got the bagger. It's a 22-inch cut, so it's a little bit bigger than I've had. You know, it'll take a few less trips around the yard kind of deal. And it's like, oh, my God, there it is. It's already assembled. It's ready to go. So I go out and I say to the kid out by the register, I'm like, Hey, can you help me with a mower? So he begrudgingly kind of just drops his head and walks over to me like, oh, God, I got to help this moron. And we go in and I said, hey, do you know the price on it? I'll have to get a scan gun. And he just wanders off. Oh and I'm gosh. like, God, this kid's not into this. And, it, you know, but he's working on Easter. So I'm trying to give him a pass. And he comes back and he goes, yeah, well, we can't sell you that one. And I said, what? why? And he goes, that's our display model. And I said, okay. well, do you have another one that isn't the display model? Now we're out. <laughs> and he looks at me and he goes, you can have it delivered site to store. Go online. <laughs> and, and to which I'm thinking, then I could just go to Amazon. Exactly. Why am, why am I trying to support, granted, the worst brick and mortar store in the entire world, but I'm still trying to support a brick and mortar and buy local, you know, in my local, if you want to call it that. Um, and guess what? They wouldn't sell it to me. They had it. It was there. I could see it, but couldn't buy it. Interesting. Yeah. So I have uh, decided today I'm going to go buy the lawnmower somewhere else and not give Walmart my business. I'll tell you, you know where you, what you ought to look at. What's that? You ought to look at these Ego um, electric mowers. I've, I, I've actually looked a little bit at They're those. They're really cool. Yeah, but would they would they do the whole yard without dying? Yeah, you sure about that? That's the yeah. There was one we were looking at My last night. That has one. There was one we were looking at last night, and it actually had a cord. And I'm thinking, how many times am I going to run over that electrical cord and blow a fuse or the whole fuse box? Seventy five minute runtime, man. Industry's most advanced blah 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 battery delivers seventy five minutes of cutting. What's the time price on a single charge? I don't know. They don't have the price on their website. Yeah. Of course they don't. Touch drive technology. It exceeds the power of gra- of gas with a 1,200-watt high-efficiency brushless motor delivering a hefty 8.3 feet. 
from yep, a pound I of noticed cutting that. torque of power through even the toughest grass. I noticed that on all of the electric, they always say brushless. What does brushless mean? I don't know what that means. I don't know. I don't know enough about elec- electronic mowing three technology. three interchangeable lower blades that allow you to customize your cut. Because I know you care so much about your cut. You know what? Okay, you make fun but of it, me. It folds up really, really nice and small, so you can fold it up and store it in your garage, and it takes up significantly less of a footprint. You make fun of me, talking about I don't care about the cut, but I actually do. <laughs> I'm one of those guys. Like, if I miss a little strip, I have to go back and get it. Like, I can't just leave it till the next cut. Well, no. Yeah, it just drives me nuts. There's... I don't like to do lawn maintenance, but by God, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to fucking do it right. Jeff, you cut the front lawn, and then you cut the back lawn like a week later. Yeah, I do it in in shifts. I mean... The front yard is seen by more people. So basically, here's what I do, and I admit it. I'll do the front yard, and then I'll do the sides maybe another day. But the backyard, I cut about every two cycles of cutting the front yard. Yeah, well, and it gets it gets thick back here. Who sees it? I mean, your ex-wife. That's true, and the neighbors. And the neighbors. She's made fun of me because I always cut it in in patches like that. Yeah. She's like, "Why can't you just do the whole yard?" Well, the funny thing is, like, if you look at the houses around us, yeah, we have a significantly larger yard than the rest of the uh, neighbors. All right, and I don't know why that is. But for some reason, our lot is bigger. If you look, just work with me here. You see the house behind us. Yeah, I mean, that requires moving. Yeah. I know. Yeah. See the house behind us. So if you think. Well, in all fairness. Their property line goes to where my garden is. In all fairness, they have a giant dead patch on their backyard there where the pool used to be. It's true. They also people, have. People that listen to us regularly have heard the kids in it. And they also have a boat and a very large shed taking up their their lawn but i'm just saying if you look at the footprint of the house it is a smaller lot our yard goes a are they half are lot. they back further off the street no yeah you're right you're, you've got about a half lot that nobody i've that almost got have. a lot and a half here and everybody else has a lot and i don't know if it's just the way it's spaced out when they made it but our our house has a larger footprint thus a large patch of grass I mean, I'm sure this is riveting for the listeners. Your alternative is you could hire like a neighborhood kid. I could, but that's one less reason for Kristen to keep me around. I see. Yeah. Valid. I guess. Yes. So I want to hear a little bit more about your uh, adventures with Teddy. I mean, it really wasn't anything too terribly like riveting. We basically well, just... it was you and Dan and Teddy, and what yeah. Teddy was in town for uh... bachelor party. Oh, cool! Yep. Good for him. He, I was saying, in terms of adventures, he's the one that had the adventures. Yeah, I, I mean, I sat there and we smoked cigars and had pizza, and that was that. You know, have you uh, heard from him since? Did he make uh, it home? Uh, did I'm he not. need? Did he need bail money? Did he? I I, I don't know. I mean, Actually, we'll come we'll come bail you out, Teddy. For all I know, he's trapped on the roof of a hotel downtown St. Louis. I, Throwing his mattress off. I really don't. Yeah, exactly. I I honestly couldn't tell you at this point. Yeah. Could you get in uh, hangover type trouble in St. Louis? I guess you could. With the strip clubs and the East Side. Yeah, you probably definitely valid point. could. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. A- Valid, valid yeah, point. Although we don't know Teddy was doing anything like that. No, I'm not accusing Teddy of that, but I'm just saying that... I have, but I'm not saying Teddy you, did. You totally could. I mean, we don't have a Mike Tyson with a tiger here. Who would be our Mike Tyson? Who would be our local kind of, you know, sports celebrity? Hmm. Would it be... Oh, my God, he'd be getting punched by Yachty or Molina. I was going to go with... Um, What's the Bush kid that dropped the helicopter in the parking lot? Well, he's just, he's, it goes back to the whole I'm difference saying, between crazy and eccentric. He's yeah. got money in his pocket. He's eccentric. But I'm just, yeah, <laughs> but I'm just saying. <laughs> Drops a helicopter into a little, like, shopping mall area hey, and, like, 18 dogs come running out of it. Didn't he go to, like, Roking? Isn't that where it was? I don't know. This was in, uh, oh, maybe it was. Wasn't it in Swansea there? Yeah. Yeah. That's eccentric. All right, then. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I could see him being, like, you know, a thing. 
No, I'm saying it'd be Yadier Molina. Because he got didn't he get in a big fight over the weekend in a game? He did get in a fight over the weekend. Something yeah. went down. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not I haven't like been able to wrap my head around exactly what happened. I haven't cared to look. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a picture and I was like, Oh, look at that. And then I moved that's on. Those two squared off, and I have no idea what was going on. You know, and that's the, the whole Cardinals problem. and the Reds. That's the whole problem with uh, sports, you know, news and everything like that. They talk about fights, but, like, where's the, like, Uber replay? Where's the, like, frame by frame? I want to watch the fight go down. You want to watch the melee. You know what else I want to watch? And this is, I mean, boy, that's a weird segue for what I'm about to say. I hate Porn. that they cut away... No. Oh, okay. I hate that they cut away from the streakers at the football games and things like that. Oh, and you know what? They're normally not streaking. They're normally in a bodysuit. Yeah, or they're like out they're, running on the field or something like that. one jackass, the, the most recent one, had on some kind of women's swimsuit or something stupid. Yeah, it's like, oh, I want to see that. It's like everybody else is seeing it. They're yeah. talking about it. It's like, why not? Why, why not show me the like? If that you know, moron wants moron. to get on the field and run around, you should keep the camera trained hey, on him. If he was able to make it past security to get down on the field to do that, he deserves the 10 seconds of fame of watching the security guards See, come on and beat the piss out of him. You call it fame. I call it shame. Well, you know. Because why are you going to be an idiot and do that? It's his and call. I'm a big fan of Rage Against you know, the Machine. And I'll also say this. Okay. Maybe you would have less of it if people saw the immediate consequences of doing it. Just the pummeling. As in the freaking knees to the back and the nightsticks to the head. You know? <laughs> so if they could see the beating they're gonna take when they do that, maybe they're not gonna do it. So I'm a big fan of Rage Against the Machine. I like their music. Don't like their politics, but like their music. Really? And I remember when they lost an award they were up for an award. I think it was the MTV Awards or God knows what, you know, some stupid ass award show. There used to be a thousand of them. Yes, because the MTV Movie Awards or MTV mean, Awards means, means so, so much. much. Exactly. I need that moon, man. <laughs> yeah, right. So they lost. And one of the guys from the band they climbed up. Themselves. Well, one of the guys from the band went and climbed <laughs> up on like the harsh. stuff. I didn't quite mean that literally. Well, yeah, good lord, they're not Nirvana. So, oh my god! So one of the guys from the band goes up and climbs up. Park. It, oh my, that's too soon. <laughs> Is it too soon? He stole so, my poster. He, he he actually did steal your poster. Running hell so. right now. Oh my that. god! <laughs> anyway, direct your correspondence to the Scar Pulp. <laughs> care of Nick. Oh my. So. He climbs up on, like, the whatever the apparatus on the stage, you know, the fancy whatever bullshit they had behind him. And, you know, he's, like, rocking back and forth on it and making a big scene. I'm thinking, dude, just lose gracefully. You don't have to be a fucking tool. So. I was going to say, that's a whole different band. Now, it's you're right. (laughs) But speaking of being. I amuse myself. Speaking of being an effing tool. I sent you a video today. Of a of a protester, and I guess they were protesting, God knows what it was. It's some sort of Antifa group out in uh, New York City. Yes, and this cat was trying. He's got this backpack on, and he's got his little like dark hoodie and a face covering, you know. And he he thinks he's all badass, and he tries to climb up the outside of this building. And gets himself a good 20 feet in the air, trying to climb onto an awning because he's going to spray paint and show them. And then plummets to what could have been his death. I'm watching the video right now. Ah, okay. So plummets to what could have been his death. He's spray painting defund something on the glass. No, this is a different okay. cat. This is a different cat. Okay. Oh, yeah. The other guy's deep painting. Yep. Oh, yeah. He's, like, scaling the, like, side of the wall. Yes. Now, wait for it. Have you watched this yet? No, I haven't. Oh, okay. So, good. Nick's going to listen to this live on so air. People are watching. He's maybe, like, I don't know. He's a good 20 feet in the air. He's about 20 feet up. Yeah. You know. He's currently about 20 feet up. He's at the top of the glass doors that lead into the lobby. I don't know where he thinks he's going. There's not that much more of this, like, kind of... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what's funny? That backpack full of shit on his back probably, like, either broke his spine or... or Wait, 
Wait, there's more. Oh, all these people are. Hun- oh my God, what is that? That's what? the black. Oh, the that's black, the black paint. spray paint yes. that was in his backpack. It's like oozing all over the sidewalk, like blood. Yes. Oh my God, this guy's not moving either. Oh no, he jacked himself. Apparently, his name's Kevin because you can hear somebody say, "Kevin, what's your passcode?" Because they have his phone. Well, yeah, they have to wipe everything. <laughs> I mean. You and I were smart enough to give our passcodes to each other in the event of something like this. We yes. We have to ask. Yes. It's just going to happen. Oh, my God. This is funny. That paint just oozing out of that paint yeah. oozing out of the thing like black tar blood. Oh, God. It's just going everywhere in, this, in the drains. And, of course, freedomnews.tv is, like, filming it as if it were blood. <laughs> They're, like, <laughs> zooming in on it in the gutter and everything. Well, and I love the security guard for the Chase building is standing out there, and he says to the kid, like, three times, get down. Yeah, get down. Get down. Get down. Oh. And, like, he knows. He knows that kid is going to just destroy himself. Exactly. Because he, fu- he had to have fucked up his knee and his elbow. And like you said, may have cracked his spine. Wow. And there was something so satisfying about watching him oh, take no. that dive. Watching him take that dive was <laughs> funny. Because it's like, you're a dumbass. Yeah, you should not have been up there. You should not have been up there. Yeah, maybe I'm get amused. a job and you wouldn't I'm, have fallen down. I'm, I'm really amused by it. Well, he obviously has some sort of sense of uh, source of income. Because that's an awful lot of spray paint. <laughs> it was a lot of spray paint. Dude, he had to have, like, really impacted. For that paint to be yes. oozing out like that, yes. he had to have, like, cracked the shells of those cans and everything. We'll so, have like, to share that video on the Cigar yeah, Pulpit you know what? Parishioners page. I will, I'll share the video on the Pulpit Parishioners page, but I'll also put a link to the video in the show notes of this episode. So if you, if, you know, for those of you who don't know, like, you know, we put the little description of the show and everything, but, like, we've got some links in the show notes sometimes. So, you know, go to the show notes. And you can uh, you can check out the stuff, but I'll, I'll put the link to this video in the show notes. There you go. So what are you getting on your uh, Alec Bradley medalist? Hmm. I know it's a light cigar for you, although it's your first cigar of the day, because we are recording it early. It is my first cigar of the day. It is a very light cigar. Realistically, I'm getting cigar. I like it. It's not bad. It, I'm I still mean, getting that look, creamy... Uh, you know, the bur- yeah, it, it's a creamy, smooth smoke. Mm-hmm. It's just... Uh, in terms of distinct flavors, I'm not really getting anything. The difference is this is a me distinct. cigar, not a you cigar. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, Jeff, why don't we get into some Ask the Boys? Let's do it. And then when we get done with that, I want to go into uh, my little trip. Oh, yeah. Because I found a brand new gem of a cigar store. All right. Shall we play a game? You talking to me? I have a question for you. You got to ask me nicely. Ask me about my winner. You got a question. You ask the APA. Come on, sucker. Let's, Let's get, get it on. All right, guys. So it is that time to answer listener questions on Ask the Boys. And you can get your questions in by calling the Ask the Boys hotline at area code 863 874 And, uh, you know, ask us anything. We're, all, you know. All, all, all questions are welcome. And, you know, we had our first listener interaction Tuesday last week, the um, last Tuesday of the month. We're going to have a listener come on and join us for the show. And think of this as kind of your audition for that. You know, show us that you can hang and that you can, uh, you know, be entertaining with us. Exactly. So. All right. So time for the first question, Jeffrey. Yeah. I was wondering... What kind of cigar you'd recommend to smoke while I'm committing a murder? Yeah, I knew this was going to go south. I I could tell from the voice. I mean, I know who it is from the voice. Oh, do you? I do know who it is. I'm not going to bust him out, but, uh, you know. What's it rhyme with? Um, Bob Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk cigars for a minute. Yes. 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 Anyway, um, contemplating a murder. See, here's the problem. I don't smoke when I contemplate it. See, I don't know. I smoke if, after. I don't. Well, yeah. I mean, you got to celebrate. Exactly. Um, you know, my thing is, uh, I don't want to answer this because it might implicate me. 
So far, there's no evidence of anything. The hobo? I, there's no evidence of anything. Okay. Nobody's convicted me of anything yet. Hell, nobody's even charged me with anything yet. So, I don't even know if they know the hobo's missing. I mean, that's why you do a hobo. But God, we whatever. gotta pull that. We gotta pull that sound clip. That's why you do a hobo. <laughs> that's going on the soundboard. <laughs> uh, Good God! All right. Well, we only have one other question for Ask the Boys. So, guys, and and by know, the way, my celebratory cigar. Yeah. Following that, it's always the Cohiba, Connecticut. Okay. I mean, there you go. Yeah. I don't smoke a lot of Cohibas, but when I kill somebody, light one up. <laughs> I mean, at least you're spending good money. Well, yeah. I mean, you're honoring the person. It could be the last cigar, you know, that I have, you know, out out in public in freedom. Could be. I, you know, here's a question. So if you, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna add my own ask the boys question to the segment. Oh my gosh! So let's to get say funky. you or I, probably me, is on death row. Uh huh. Because I finally got caught, and I they, they always give you your last meal, but would they honor a last cigar? Well, considering we live in Illinois and they don't do the death penalty, you wouldn't have to worry about it. Valid point. But then you never get a last meal, and those are really good. Yeah. You get whatever you want. I know. But could you get a cigar to go with it? Um, We need to talk to somebody in Texas, because they're killing people all the time. I mean, we could call, you know, there's a couple people down there we could call that we know. Get a hold of the alibi. They've got our. They've got the uh, bishop and gator. Mm-hmm. I want to get down there. You want to do point. a phone a friend? We're gonna just call the alibi right now and ask him. No, you know what? We are gonna do a phone a friend. <laughs> We're gonna do a phone a friend. Hang on, Al. Yep. Okay. Hang on. Hey, brother man. Al Roman, what's going on? Hey, brother, we are just uh, hanging out. We went to go eat lunch, had a margarita on a Monday, and uh, we're out cruising around right now. Al, for for full disclosure, Gator's on as well, and you are live on the show, brother. You are are, are on the show. Hey, is that the Melissa? Melissa's here. Hello. What's up, Melissa? Hi, Melissa. I'm I'm taking off today. Oh. What are you taking off? Everything. (laughs) (laughs) Damn it. Why does my co-host always flirt with your co-host, Al? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you and Al well, can flirt. Why aren't you flirting with me? Because I am so damn sexy. I, but nobody... <laughs> I feel like Charlie Brown. So, I think you're more in Nick's wheelhouse than mine. <laughs> so, we, so we have a question. We have a question. And we thought that you might be able to answer it. Yes, because we don't have the death penalty in Illinois. And you're in Texas. And you guys are always killing people. Great. I love questions. Well, I'm a Virgo. Uh, I like walks on the beach. My turnoffs are rude people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Thank um, you for the question. So seriously, so we were talking about the death penalty, and Jeff pointed out that when you're on death row, you get your last meal, you know. But he's like, if I'm on death row and I want my last cigar, can I have my last cigar? No. Yes, I would want one. Oh my no, god, yes. I don't like yeah, but like, are they going to let you? See, in, in, Illinois, no, I, in Illinois, I we don't have don't the death know. penalty, so like honestly, we don't. It's it's irrelevant here. But I just didn't know if in Texas, if they if they would do that. Um, well, I'm changing my answer. I say they would let you have one because they allow you to have a cigarette. Like you can smoke in prison, so yeah, they would let you have a last cigar. Can you smoke in prison anymore? Yeah, yeah, you, you still can because I know at the uh, Collin County they still sell cigarettes and stuff. Really. You have to mm-hmm. go out on the yard. You can't smoke that in your cell, I'm guessing. Yeah, you can't smoke it in the cell. There's a certain areas like during your daytime or light time or out in the yard time that you can actually smoke that. Gotcha. Interesting. All right. Well, okay, well, so, that may have so, answered. So potentially is the answer here. Yes, potentially, I believe so. I mean, are they going to let me actually smoke it all the way and enjoy it? Yeah, I'd make that cigar last about four hours. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> Churchill. I say, no, screw it, Churchill, dude. I'm going to be getting one of those like eight by eighty asylum things. You know, <laughs> like, I want to, I want to stretch that out four, for like four, four and, and a half yeah. hours. Exactly. <laughs> that's well, this, what I'd be doing. This all hinged from a, uh, a call that we got from somebody that likes to. You yeah, know, we, talk we had an ask cigars. the boys. We had an ask the boys question that was, uh, "What cigar would you smoke while you're contemplating a murder?" 
Hmm. That's a good, that's a damn good question. Mm-hmm. See, now I said I don't smoke them when I contemplate. I smoke them after I complete them. <laughs> there you go. It's kind of a celebratory thing. Right? Exactly. Yeah. The Cohiba co- <laughs> Connecticut. And I said that I don't want to answer it because it might implicate me. <laughs> it, very true, brother. So, because you don't want this evidence coming up later on 10 years down that's the road. Exactly. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Nobody's ever proven yeah. anything. Why should I start now? You know? Nobody knows yeah. about that hobo. Jeff, if you there is no hobo. Out- yeah. Well, not if anymore. You every cigar. Yeah, that hooker you run over, you ran over. Don't worry, they're not going to find it for a long time. I mean, there's no hooker, there's no hobo. You guys need to shut your freaking <laughs> mouths. <laughs> we're on, the, we're on the list now. Exactly, yes, exactly, exactly. Dude, we're doing the, uh, we're smoking the Alec Bradley uh, medalist, and uh, if, if if everybody on the show, I don't know if Nick introduced you guys, but this is uh, Alan Melissa from uh, the Good Cigar. Yes. Hello. On the air with us. Hello, have, you, have you guys ever smoked the Alec Bradley Medalist? No, we have not. But we did uh, recently smoke the, uh, the what was the toast one? Oh, the Magic Toast. Magic Toast. Yep. And that was absolutely wonderful. So I'm looking forward to, I haven't tried the one you're doing now, but it will be very soon, I can assure you. I can tell by Nick's face it's a little too light for him, but it's a perfect cigar for me. I'm smoking air here, Al. Smoking air. Oh, that's going to be, you know, it's a light cigar. Yeah. And that's, what, you know, it, it may be something I would smoke for in the in the, mor- in the morning with coffee. Yeah. This is mm-hmm. a breakfast cigar. Definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. And I like it. It's real yeah. creamy. It was creamy off the, uh, off the start with the uh, cold draw and the cold retro. And then mm-hmm. it's been creamy. It's got some kind of spice on the retro hail, but neither of us could put our finger on it. Huh. Mm-hmm. Very heavy, creamy in your mouth is what you're saying. Yes. And it's apparently in Jeff's wheelhouse. It is in my wheelhouse. I admit it. <laughs> well, and Nick, Nick should be happy because he didn't have a cigar for today. And I had to go through my humidor. And we kind of were winging it today. Yeah. And I, I'm like, oh, my God, I got two medalists. So that's that's how we picked the cigar today. Oh, well, that's a good deal, dude. You're a very lucky man. You know what I think we should do? What and then that? Alan and Melissa will have to listen to this because we won't keep them on for the whole time because they're driving. But... Um, we need to, we can sit down and go through my humidor and I can let you know what all I've got. What? Right now? Well, at some point during the show. Yeah. Just do it on the, we'll but do we it live. We don't have to do it with You them. know what would be fun? Well, Sometimes we, yeah. we do a show together and uh, we'll zoom it in where we're all, all together and we're smoking the same cigar and we can compare it and smoke it and just, we'll just do a whole show. We'll put it on yours, on yours and we'll put it out on ours. It's just the cigar pulp and good cigar. Uh, show that week. The, like well, it. or or Al, you and Nick the could do show. a show, and then Melissa and I could do one. So once again, we could do a show together, <laughs> which would be really good. <laughs> You're gonna enjoy. Why don't we just throw our keys into a bowl and see what happens? Whoa! <laughs> Yay! Because at least two of us are losing. <laughs> 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 at least two of us are losing. Uh, and, yes. and you could make the argument, depending on who she gets, Melissa loses. Yes, that's my point. At least two <laughs> of us. You can really do that too as well. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> well, you guys rock, and I hope you have a wonderful day down there in the uh, Republic of Texas. I love that state. You are welcome. Hey, y'all are welcome anytime to you. I need to plan a trip down here. It's, it's You know, we're open now, fully open, so you come down here and... You're good to go. Love it. We do need to plan a trip down there because uh, I know that Smoker's Alibi down there in, I think, Laredo has uh, the Bishops and the Gators. How close are you to Laredo? They're not. Oh. We're not. Texas is so <laughs> big. You can drive, you, I think, to Laredo, we're, what, six hours, seven hours, maybe more? Oh, oh God. Laredo. Yeah, it's um, this is huge. Yeah. Well, it, you got to understand. It's country. You, you got to understand. I've been to Texas twice. I've been to Texas twice. And yeah, we drove four hours yesterday and didn't didn't hit the border. Wow, wow, yeah i I've been to Texas twice. I was down there for uh, basic training at Lackland, or now I think it's mm-hmm. Joint Base Lackland. I don't know what it's called now, but back back then it was Lackland Air Force Base. And so I've been there for that, and I've also been to Texarkana uh, when my daughter Hannah and I were down at uh, Crater of Diamond State Park in Arkansas, and she realized we were close to Texas. She'd never been, so we drove down and. Crossed the border, stayed the night in Texas, and then drove back. Oh yeah, Texarkana's not far from us. It's it's like four hours away. So Texarkana, <laughs> yeah, that's that's just a normal regular Sunday drive for you guys. <laughs> no, Texarkana was a really it was a really cool town, and the courthouse is fun. 
because it's literally built, and I don't know how they ever got away with this. You couldn't, I don't think you could do it now, but it's built across the border of Arkansas and Texas. So the yes, courthouse is. is literally in both states. Hence the Texas. Yeah, isn't that wild? Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. You know, Elvis, uh, that Texas Arcata used to be a huge stopping point for industry. Tra- a train, major trains came through there. Uh, because of the cotton, shipping cotton back and forth through different areas of the state, also oh. uh, other produce and as long as meat and cattle as well. And that was the main stopping point. So like Elvis and all the big uh, the big bopper and all those guys, they used to come down to Texarkana to play because that was a major event place to go play is, was Texarkana. Really? That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I had no idea. Well, we got some history. Love it. Everything's bigger in Texas, baby. See, you get everything. You get history from the good cigar when he comes onto the cigar pulpit. You get science <laughs> from the good cigar when you listen to the cigar or good cigar. Yeah, I've got my fingers in a lot of different pies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even, you know. There's, <laughs> God love her. Melissa's on the line, and I just can't do it. Gonna let that go. I yeah. just can't do it. So I'm gonna. <laughs> Do it! Do it! <laughs> no. Oh, I think I think the uh, the the key bowl was far enough for today. <laughs> Let's be real; we were all thinking it. Melissa's just the one who said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. she's the obvious. poor victim in this one. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you guys have a wonderful day, and thank you for the insight about death row. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> Anytime, my friend. Okay. Anytime. What cigar would you smoke? Did you did you decide on one besides just a long one, or did you? Oh, I mean, yeah. For me, it would just be it would be like that Asylum Eight by Eighty. I I want the biggest, like longest smoke I could get. Prolong that that inevitable. The inevitable. You know, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're just down to the nub, man. You're just hanging on I'm for like, dear I've life. Got, I'm going to need a cigar pick so I can get this all the way down. I'm little, not done yet. One little shred of tobacco, and I'm just like barely Nursing hanging it. on. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm going to bitch that this one was clogged. Get me another one. Yeah. This yeah. one was plugged. You really want my last cigar to be plugged? <laughs> <laughs> I struggled my whole way through that. I've been plugged enough in prison. I need another, need another cigar. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Oh, oh, dear God. Well, we look forward to the key party, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. Oh. Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate it. You are welcome. Good Bye. good talking to you. Have a good Bye. See you guys. Bye bye. I love them. I know, they're great. No, oh. I don't know I don't know if that, we gained that any... went places that I didn't know it would go. <laughs> it's Ella Melissa, that's what it's gonna do. No, I I get it, but I I didn't see that happening. <laughs> whatever. So. so do we have any more Ask the Boys? We do. We have one more question here. So uh, You got to admit, we milked that answer. We did. We did. <laughs> that was like a 20-minute answer we did. to a one or 30-second question. 30-second question. So, All right. We got one more question here for Ask the Boys. Hey, boys. It's Christian calling from Connecticut. Hey, Not Christian. on the socials, but I think you guys know me by now. Big, big polka. polka. Man, I got to hand it off to the pastor. His, his sermon was phenomenal. My priest is not going to have anything on, on this on Sunday. <laughs> I think he's going to have to listen to this. To, oh, my. To get the true story and meaning of Easter. Just just pass it on to the pastor. Job well done. Just phenomenal. <laughs> Hope you guys had a good we holiday. shouldn't encourage that. No. It. And, uh, Nick, this is kind of for uh, for you right here, this one, this question. Uh, I was having a smoke and some drinks with a buddy. And somehow the topic of Power Rangers and Voltron came up. Now, I know you had a rough run in with that Red Ranger. You know what? He's a dick. I agree with you. He's a dick. He's overrated. (laughs) Now, what we were talking about is the Power Rangers are essentially a ripoff of Voltron. Now, I remember watching Voltron as a kid growing up. And we know that they had a Red Leader as well. It's true. So my question to you is, do you agree? You agree that the Power Rangers is a crappy ripoff of Voltron, which is a way better, better story and show and character driven. And let's face it, goddamn Voltron looks better than that crap thing of mishmash dinosaurs that the Power Rangers end up putting together. And I need you guys help with this one question. I forgot they made a dinosaur. Uh, if I don't get it right, I'm looking at summer school. Uh, hold on. 
that's cool as well. What's going on? Okay, sorry. Just got to drop the phone. Okay. Polka Little getting math question beat up? Guys. Okay. Math question. Solve. Oh, God. The uh, question I got goes like this. Uh, Nick and Gator both decide to meet at Riverman's for a night of cigar smoking and shenanigans. The distance between Nick's ice fishing tent and Gator's farm bunker is equally 36 miles apart to the Riverman's. Nick departs from his tent and Gator departs from his bunker and Naked Gardening, both leaving at the same time while heading over to Riverman. We know that one of them is driving 10 miles per hour faster than the other. One has no working heater in their car, while the other one has a wine fridge bumping around in their trunk, <laughs> while no one has checked up on Larry the Mute in quite some time. <laughs> what are the speeds of each driver 20 minutes after their departures when the distance between them is 21 miles? You guys can solve that for me? By Tuesday, that'd be awesome because I need to submit it by Wednesday. Thank you again, guys. Keep it up. Stay classy. Stay smoking. So, Big Polka wants to know which of us gets there first. Is that what I think I, so? Is but that there what was we're... some like legit math involved in that. And quite frankly, <laughs> oh God, me. I, I, quite frankly, I, I mean, Nick had a I got it. I got into journalism so I wouldn't have to do math. Nick had a be <laughs> the size of his fist just floating in front of his face. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, your carpenter bees are back. Yes, they um, are. With a vengeance. So, okay. I you can, you hear, can hear you it. can hear them buzzing in the microphone here. Yep. So I'm trying to remember that math problem. That okay. I was distracted by all the really awesome references that he threw in there. <laughs> that was really good. It was really good. So I can explain this. Nick is going to be there first because I get, you get lost sucked into time loops. In a time yes. I I go through wormholes. I go. I get abducted by aliens. Things happen to me. And Nick can back me up on this. I've experienced it. So the other night, we're coming back from Riverman. And, like, we lost two hours. Mm -mm. It was going to Riverman. Oh, going to Riverman. I sorry. picked you up at 730. It was 9 o'clock before we arrived at Riverman. And it's a and half hour away. no good reason for that. Yes. No good reason for that. We stopped at the Starbucks, but that Starbucks is two minutes up the road from Dan's place. Yes. So there's no good reason for the fact that you and I <laughs> were that late. No. To Riverman. It's, it really is like somebody just Time reached just kind of like yeah. stopped. Or sped up. Well, yeah. 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 Sped up would probably be more appropriate, but yeah. So, so I, I referenced this earlier that I was going to get into this, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about it now. Because of the question, it's relevant. Okay. So we had our trip down to Southern Illinois that we did. We took Addie, um, stayed in a cabin, which, by the way, it's called Hilltop Cabin in Southern Illinois. If you ever want to come visit the Shawnee National Forest and go to Garden of the Gods, this is the cabin to rent. You can look it up online and find it. It's awesome. So we stay in this cabin, and we go to Garden of the Gods, and uh, we also go down to uh, oh. Uh, Cave and Rock, which is a really neat little tourist area right on the Ohio River. We also uh, drove an hour and crossed over into uh, Paducah, went and had lunch at a place called Bruchard's. It used to be the old Whaler's Catch for anyone that knows the Paducah area. So while we're down there, I ran across a cigar store. Okay. And I'm going to mention this. I know we're still in Ask the Boys, but it's relevant. So I run across this cigar store down there, and we're in, down in Old Town, down by the Burchard's, the old whaler's catch. And right around the corner from that is a great new place called the Old Fashioned Cigar Bar in Paducah, Kentucky. Huh. And I went into this place. They have a really nice uh, humidor, but they've got a lounge downstairs. They've also got a lounge upstairs um, that's like a members only lounge that you can, you know, with the cabinets and everything. But it's just this really cool little cigar bar that you can go into, sit and have a drink, sit and have a smoke, and they took really good care of me. Um, I got to meet, you know, the owner. I got to meet, uh, you know, one of the employees there, and they gave me a real nice tour of the place. I can't say enough good stuff about the old-fashioned cigar bar in Paducah, Kentucky. So that being said, I just, cool. I went in. I have to get by down there. Oh, I'm taking you. We're going it's down there. It's not that far. I, and they showed a little bit of interest. I'm not, I'm not going to throw it out there that they've got them, but they showed a little bit of interest in getting the uh, Bishop and Gator, because I talked to him about our cigars, and uh, hopefully we're going to get some samples down to them, and they like them. Maybe we'll we'll have a place down in Paducah that's carrying our cigars. That'd be cool. So, that being said, we get back in the car, and we leave, and 
like hours and hours go by. And finally, Kristen's like, what is it with you? And I said, what? And she goes, we should have been back to Garden of the Gods by now because we were going to hit that and stay there and watch uh-huh. the sunset and everything, which it's, it's just beautiful. These rock outcrops from like an ancient ocean that was up in southern Illinois. It's a whole thing. So she's like, I don't understand. She goes, is this what happens to you all the time? Is this why you're always late? And I said, yes, this is exactly what happens. Like, I can just be driving somewhere and an hour disappears. Yeah. And it happened to us just like it did with you the other night on the way to Riverman. It happened to us that one time we were out delivering your papers, too. Yes. We were out uh, delivering your papers and it took us all day. Yes. All day long. Yes. And by all rights, we should we should have been done early afternoon. And it was six or seven o'clock at night before yeah. we were done. And it, there's no good reason for no, that. No, and it happens to me all the time. And I can't explain it. Like, what what would take a normal human being a half hour to do will take me two to three hours. I don't get it. Yeah. I in in I'm just I mean, I I'm used to it because it's just my life. But when like I sucked you into the vortex and I sucked Kristen into the vortex this weekend with the trip and you guys have both pointed it out and it's got me thinking about it. I'm like, where does time go with me? <laughs> it's I don't know. really bizarre. I'm telling you, you've got some sort of like universal entity that's just like taking you for yes. a ride every once my, in a while. My, my time clock in my life is set differently you know, than everyone ex- else's. This might explain your pooping. Nothing explains that. Well, no, 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 no. If you're getting like constantly anal probed, it might explain. Could be the the loose stools. <laughs> They're not loose. That's the problem. <laughs> oh my god, the turtle! <laughs> oh my god, that's like crap at a turtle. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> anyway, so right. so the answer to the so question the, yes, is the Nick will the get there first. I'm going to get there first. Yes, just because now. It has nothing to do with math. It just has everything to do with Jeff, and it just, has maybe more to do with science. Well, and it's but funny, not math, because I have always thought, oh, I just wander off and chase shiny things. But I didn't chase a shiny thing with you in the car that day. No, I, I was driving. And I didn't do that I with was Kristen. driving. Yes. I was driving. There's no reason on earth that we should have been that late. Yes, but yet there we were. But all of a sudden, it's like, oh my god, why aren't we? We should have been there at eight o'clock, and we didn't get there till after nine. It was late. Yes, and nothing to explain it. Nope. So so Nick will always get there before I will, no matter how far away we are from anything. Exactly. So there you go. Thanks, Big Polka. Appreciate it. We'll have to get Big Polka on for one of the uh, Listener Interaction Tuesdays here coming up soon. Absolutely. So, Oh, my God. The bees. The bees are out in force. Well, guys, this has been this week's Ask the Boys. Make sure you get your questions into us through the hotline, area code 863-874-0000. I really like the outro and hate the intro. I think I'm like most of the listeners. Suck it. Dude, I'm telling you, you seriously... When we go down, you are going to absolutely love the old fashioned cigar bar. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it's really really cool. I'm looking forward yep. to it. I was I was so happy when actually Kristen's the one that pointed it out. I might have even missed it. She pointed it out, and I make a no pun intended here with the bees on the deck, but I made a beeline for it and really enjoyed it. All right. Yep. Well, how about we give away some cigars? I'm all in. So a, a Martinez prize pack? It is a Martinez prize pack. So, guys, in order to give it, get in on the weekly giveaway, all you got to do is head over to CigarPulpit.com and sign up for our newsletter. And at some point, we'll have another newsletter yeah, coming out. But you're signed up for it. But you're signed up for it. So when it arrives, it'll be a nice surprise. A really, really big surprise. Yes. And uh, Kind of a shocker, as it were. But once you're... I'm not giving the listeners a shocker. <laughs> but I mean, it's going to shock them when they get the newsletter. Okay. Yeah. I, with you, I have to question. What are you talking about? Anyway. Well, guys, get in on the list. <laughs> oh, God. He threw up the shocker. He threw up the shocker. Um. Anyway, guys. Boy, this episode's gotten blue. Uh, just get in well, on. We the had list. Alan Melissa. That's gonna That's happen. True, yeah. which is the sexiest damn cigar podcast. They are. Um. Anyway, get in. I'm thrown off as all hell. <laughs> get in on the, uh, the the newsletter list, and that gets you in on the the contest. So, who's our winner today? 
without further ado. Drum roll, please. Our winner for this week is Pat Weldon. Pat Weldon. Pat Weldon. <laughs> DJ Airhorn. Pat Weldon. So all you got to do, Pat, is just shoot me an email at nick at cigarpulpit.com by next Monday, giving me your mailing address, and I will get that forwarded on appropriately, and you will be receiving your Martina Cigars prize pack. Yay! It'll be fun. Fun times. So uh, I want to ask you about the cigar here in a second, okay. but before I do that, I want to remind the listeners, coming up on Friday, Friday, if the planets all align and everything goes correctly, you should. You know the the what what they used to say. You know the creek don't rise and all that. You know the farm I, I, sayings. I don't know. Ever heard that? No. No. Move Never on. heard that. Oh. Keep moving on. So we're gonna have Nick from my monthly cigars on to do an unboxing for April. We are, we are, and you can uh, tune into that on Friday. Find out what's in the April my monthly cigars box. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? I don't have that on the thing. Okay. Anyway. And well, I think this we'll is an appropriate time to say, what is My Monthly Cigars? My Monthly Cigars is a premium cigar subscription service where you can get a box of cigars sent to your door every month. You and I actually get the El Presidente, which is we do. eight cigars for $50. It's two of everything that he has in his Robusto box, which is four cigars for $30. And it's a good way for you and I to get two of the same cigars so that we can smoke them and talk about them. There you go. Or and, hoard them. Or hoard them. Or hoard them. And both of those boxes come with the MSRP guarantee, stating that the value of the cigars is guaranteed to meet or exceed the price of the box. And if you use off code pulpit, P-U-L-P-I-T, that gets you free shipping on the first box, as well as 20% off any of the items in Nick's online store, where he has cigars and accessories and other fun stuff. And you get to bank up your ash cash and get all sorts of you know, extra goodies because true, that's true. his reward program. So, you know, you're getting rewarded for buying cigars, which I don't know how you can lose in that situation. No, it's a win-win. It is truly a win-win. So, MyMonthlyCigars.com. MyMonthlyCigars.com. What are you getting on your Alec Bradley medalist? So, I am in, I'm down to the Brock. Are I'm you getting in, any pepper at the end? I'm picking up a little bit. A little bit of pepper and or spice. I never could put my finger on what that was. There's a little bit of pepper at the end. Um, I am down to the final third. And I, I'll say this. It's been a while since I took a drag on this cigar. Yeah. Stayed lit. Yeah. And, you know, you were talking about burn line. I haven't had an issue. My burn line corrected itself. Yeah. I was just puffing a little fast in the beginning, I think. But it corrected itself. I mean, it's a good cigar. It's just a little light for my palate. Yeah. But all in all, I, I can't complain. It it pairs up nicely with the coffee that I have sitting here. You uh, do a final third retro hail? Oh, my God. I knew you were going to ask. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> there, yeah, there's pepper on the retro there. Yeah, the pepper picked up. Yeah. And that's full of pepper. That's not whatever that, the spice yeah, we were hitting that, earlier. That's pepper. Yeah. So. I like the cigar. It's not bad. It's, like I said, a little little light for me, but... Hey, you know what? It's a good breakfast cigar. Well, and that's the, you know, we talk about it all the time, but your palate and my palate are completely different. Yep. Which is, I think, good for the show because we're not always enjoying the same, you know, we, we well, as, as most of the time we smoke the we same both, cigar, if we, we have different thoughts on it. And that's the thing. If we both liked the same thing, we'd be smoking like the same kind of cigar. Yeah. This way it kind of forces us we push out our, of our. We push our limits. Exactly. Yeah. I push you to smoke some, you know. Man cigars, and you give me baby cigars. My God, that's not the case at all. <laughs> I like a nice shade-grown, you know. Can I, I get it? I get it. So, we were talking earlier, because this cigar came out of my humidor. Yes. And Nick wanted me to kind of go over a few things in my humidor before yeah, we wrap up here. it'd be fun to do a little tour through Gator's humidor. So, first He's off. He's got his Don Pepin original uh, My Father Cigars humidor that he won over at the Hill. Oh, it's yeah. And that, oh, it is a gorgeous humidor. And this thing holds humidity. Good. Yeah. Because you're bad about maintaining humidors. Yes. And this thing, um, I've got the little humidor or the little uh, humidifier. What is it called? The little box thing here. Yeah, the humidifier. Yeah, that came yeah. with it. I keep that uh, filled with distilled water, and then I keep a couple of Bovida packs in there, or Bovida, depending on how you pronounce it. So, 
here we go. I'm going to go down just, just we'll, we'll hit a dozen just a or handful. so. Yeah. Say, just a handful. I've got a really nice little, uh, what is it, Perla Del Mar. It's from uh, J.C. Newman. J.C. Newman, yep. And it's one of the Corojos. I believe they, yeah. I believe we got this cigar when we were down on our tour. Yes, we did. Yep. That was that was an exclusive at the time because, uh, you know, that was not available yet. They gave it to us as kind of like a uh, mea culpa because uh, uh, originally we thought we were going to be able to smoke on the tour. Yes. But then we had to wear a mask everywhere. Yeah. So as kind of a, their way of, you know. So I look forward to smoking Apologizing, that. which they did not need to do that. No, I mean, not at all. I would have. I mean, look, it is what it is. And if you guys haven't a wonderful tour done the tour at J.C. Newman, you need to get down to uh, Tampa, go over to Ebor City, and tour the factory because it is awesome. Mm-hmm. Next up, I have a cigar that I got over at Riverman. Okay, I've got a really nice uh, Ashton ESG. Oh, I bought one of those for Teddy. Yeah, it's the Estate Sun Grown. Um, it's a little higher dollar cigar. I'm keeping it, you know, as a celebratory cigar. That's the cigar you and I smoked on our one year anniversary. It show was, last and August. it's really, really good. Super good cigar. I also have uh, some cigars from my father. Yes, I'm, a, I'm a fan of my father. I like the my father line. I know. And this is a uh, edition CT and edition That's Connecticut, Connecticut. I'm guessing. Yep. And uh, it's got, the thing I like. I know you think their bands are too busy. I like their bands. I think they're very fancy. They are busy bands, but yeah. it's the a my really father nice Connecticut is a wonderful yes, it is. Connecticut. This is a nice. It's little one of the few stuff. Connecticut's that I'm like all in on because that final third of that cigar just ramps up. It's great. I haven't tried this yet. The Crux Epicure. Now that's the Epicure Maduro. Yes, and I have not yeah. smoked this yet, but I've got it in here. That's going to be a later day cigar for me because I have a feeling it's going to be a little, uh, little, little yeah. more, a little more of a your cigar than a my cigar, but yeah. whatever. Um, Crux speaks good stuff. They do. They really do. Next up, got some Macanudos. Yeah, that was yeah. the other one that you were thinking about for today. It was actually the Inspirado. 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 Yeah. yeah. But yeah, this is in a uh, Churchill size. And it's the Inspirato White. Churchill. I don't buy a lot of Churchills. I, I like Churchills, especially if I'm on a longer drive. I'll smoke a, a Churchill because I get a little more time out of it. Well, with Churchills, I have the same problem that I have with um, Lanceros in that I got to smoke them a little slow. Otherwise, I get runs and they burn weird. Now, this little guy's a sugar tip, or I believe it's a sugar tip. It's a uh, Pinnacle cigar. I got this over at the Hill. Oh, okay. And it's the... I can't even... How would you pronounce that? Oh, God. That's actually one that I got for Kristen. Angelique? I think that's it. Angelique? Are you sure it's a sugar tip? I'm pretty sure that's a sugar tip. Okay. I don't know. And then my humidor wouldn't be complete without some uh, Jerry Jerry Aladino. Aladino Cameroon. Is that the uh, Lonsdale? It is. And I like the Lonsdale. You know, I know I normally smoke like Toros and whatnot, but I really like the Lonsdale in this because you get so much more of the the uh, Cameron wrapper. wrapper. Yeah. So let's. That's on the top shelf. Oh, he's going into the good stuff. We're deep diving. Going into the bottom now. We got a three hundred hands. Three hundred hands. Yep, it's the three hundred hands Connecticut, and uh, this is from Nicaragua. Who makes this? Southern Draw. Southern Draw. Very very good cigar. Ooh, I got a Corojo here. Look at this. A CLE Corojo. A CLE Corojo. Yep. I've okay. got some. That one's been resting in here for a while. Let me dig down. Ooh, I have a house blend from Davidoff. Oh, yeah. For a cigar, uh, a cigar shop down in uh, Florida that we would love to have on the show. Yeah. You know, and I, again, I would think... It'd be a sure thing to be able to get them on. It's not a sure thing to get them on, Jeff. No, it's not a sure thing. But I'd, I'd like to have them on because I actually bought two of these at that store. I don't want to say the name of it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'd really like to smoke this on the show if they'd call us back. I, I don't know if that's going to happen. I don't think it's going to. <laughs> I've reached out to them multiple times and they have promptly ignored me. Look at that. That would be a, what, Year of the Rat? Yes, Drew Estate. It's the Velvet Rat. Look at you. Yeah. That, that, I would not imagine, is in your little wheelhouse. No, and that's why it's probably still in the humidor, because I'm scared to smoke it. <laughs> I've got another another uh, Cameroon there. Let's see what else we got. 
I've got another Davidoff. This is actually a Masters blend. Okay. Yeah, the Selection Seven. So I've got some. I've got some good stuff down deep in the humidor here. Stuff. I do. Uh, I've got a nice LFD 50th anniversary. Oh, look at you. The uh, Flor Dominicana. I think this came from, and I could be wrong. This might have been from the Kansas City Cigar Festival pack that we got. Possibly. I don't know. Possibly. I don't know. I know where most of my cigars came from, but I don't know where that one came from. Got a really nice oh, little. I've lost track of where uh, all my cigars came from. Oh, I bet. Yeah, you. Yeah. Okay. Th- what I've got here is just scratching the surface of what you have in your multiple humid well, Tupper doors you and whatnot. Been over to see. No, I need to. Yeah. Uh, I've got a nice little Oliva Connecticut. I here. actually have a few things I want to give you that's over there. So. Oh, do you? I might I might trade you a few out. I've got an Esteban uh, Carrera. It's the uh, Vigilante. Oh, that that would actually be a good selection for when you're plotting the murders and whatnot. The Vigilante. Oh yeah, that would be good. Yep. Yeah. That, come to think of it, that might. That's a new work budget out. cigar that Dan just got in over at Riverman. Yep. Ooh, this one I've kept for a special occasion. Oh yeah. You ready? The Padron Anniversary Series. Ooh, look at uh-huh. you. Oh, yeah. I what see. year? This is the uh, 1964. Look at you. Yeah. It's even numbered. Wow. Very cool. That's not something I would have thought I'd find in Gator's Humidor. No. I also have a uh, La Gloria Cabana. Okay. That is the, uh, it's the Maduro, it's the Series R Esteli. All you can right. really taste, taste the, the Esteli. Esteli. Jeff likes to taste the Esteli. I've got a couple of these guys, too, with the metal bands. Yeah, what are those? The This is a uh, Macanuno Vintage. Okay. Yeah. It's a uh, Vintage We were talking about that with... Um, I know where I got this, Lupe. Too. Lupe. We were. I know yeah. where I got this. Oh, yeah? That was actually at Diebel's in Kansas City oh. when we were out there. I've had that cigar for... I would say you've had that cigar well over for a year. coming up two years. Now, I've got one in a test tube here. Yep, that one's in the tube. It's the Bourbon Cigar. It's the 10th Anniversary Series. Let's see here. It's a handmade 650, seasoned with Maker's Mark. Oh. Look at that. So Spiffy. Spiffy. I'm getting down to the end here. I've got a few quorums. I've got a couple of uh, couple of Tadaskin Yellow Series here. I also have, from the uh, J.C. Newman... The Julius Caesar. Ah, Julius Caesar. Good cigar. Got that on our trip down to uh, Ebor as well. Yep. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, now this is actually one I got That's for, a little guy. For Kristen, the Tayback Especial. Oh, okay. From Drew like Estate. little guy, yeah. yeah. She smoked one of those yesterday and really enjoyed it. This is a, a cigar that you gave me. Oh, my God. I gave you Almost two years ago. ago. Yeah. Yeah. This is a uh, Grand Marnet, which I love Grand Marnet. I know. And it's a Grand Marnay cigar. It's in a test tube. And I don't know who makes this. Uh, I don't know. But, yeah, it's infused with the Grand Marnay. The Cordon Rouge. All right. Yeah. It's from the Dominican Republic. And as we finish up here, I'll do two more. This is one that Nick gave me for Christmas. The Casada 1974. Yeah. Love that cigar. Also have a Cuesta Ray from down at uh, the Newman Ray. Factory. Yep. And again, this is one that I purchased at the factory itself. I've got a uh, nice little punch egg roll. Egg roll. And I like the container. I would have bought a box of those just just for the, for container. the container. Yeah, dude, it was a ceramic like to go container, like Chinese food to go container. Oh yeah, it was very so cool. cool. So cool. Then I have a uh, a Fuente Reserve Don Carlos. Okay, it's in the robusto size. You have a number of Robustos, which kind of surprised me. I've got another Macanudo metal band. Yeah. It's the Macanudo, uh, also vintage. This one's the 1997. All right. So so last but not least, I have a Lagolero Maduro, and it's also a 5 by 50 Robusto. Hector Amacho. Well, there you go. All right. No, I'm sorry. Hector Amano. Amano. Hector Amano. So that is a uh, glimpse inside well, my humor. A little, little, little behind the scenes was, story. Of was there more humor. variety there than you expected? There was actually quite a bit more variety than I expected, and, and the fun, and quite a bit more darker cigars than I expected. Yeah. the The funny thing about that is, I will smoke a darker cigar like a late evening, or especially with uh, if I'm pairing it up with like some kind of bourbon or whiskey. 
Mm-hmm. So I do keep those for those occasions. But yeah, I you know I my everyday smoke is more of a Connecticut shade grown. Um, real big on obviously my own cigar, the Gator. Yeah, which I've seen a lot of people have been putting up pictures of on the uh, socials. Yep, and I really do appreciate you guys trying out our sticks, whether whether it's the Gator or it's the Bishop. Yeah. So we appreciate you trying that out. Um, one, some cigars that I'm low on right now. I normally uh, have a really good selection of uh, oh the uh, Martinez cigars, including the Cigar Pulpit series. But I'm down to right now. I think the only one that I have left that yep, the only one I have left that I have not smoked is the uh, had to open up the travel humidor because I've got it in there. Is the uh, flat iron. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm down to one flat iron and uh, one gator left. Yeah, I don't know what I have in terms of Martina cigars on hand at home. I'll have to look. In the uh, Also in the travel humidor, I've got a really nice island gym, and I've got my uh, Cohiba, Connecticut. Uh-oh, somebody's going to die. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Saving somebody's that one. Somebody's going to die. Saving that one. So there you go. That is a uh, quick glance inside of my humidor. Well, very cool. Well, well, I am done with my uh, Alec Bradley. I was going to say, I have finished my Alec Bradley as well. It went very nicely with the coffee I have here from Common Grounds that I brought back from Carbondale. And just, yeah, it paired up nicely with that. It was a good breakfast cigar, good morning cigar. I would agree. It was was a light, good breakfast cigar. It was one to kind of kickstart the day. Exactly. So... Well, there you it go. Was all right. So, uh, Nick, as we finish up here, I referenced the socials a minute ago. How do folks reach out to us on those? We are on Instagram at the Cigar Pulpit, as well as at Naked Gator, any KKID Gator. That's my page. We're also on Facebook, where we have the Cigar Pur- Pulpit Parishioners Group, which has been a lot of fun to watch. It has been fun. Yeah. So you want to get in on that, and then we're also on Twitter, YouTube, where at some point here I'm going to do that serial thing. Yes. It's just a matter of when. I mean, we just got to make that happen. Sooner than later. We got to make that happen. And then you can reach out to us through the Contact the Pulpit page on CigarPulpit.com. And then, guys, get those questions in for Ask the Boys. Keep them coming. Area code 863-874-0000. You know, uh, one thing that we didn't talk about in the Ask the Boys. What's that? Is we had a reference to uh, the Easter sermon from Pastor Barnaby. Yes, we did. And I know you don't want to talk about that because of the court order and whatnot. But it was... uh, it was an interesting take. It was. On Easter. Yes. It was. Yeah. It had a lot going on. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny. We we didn't reference it in the last show because we actually thought he'd forgot about doing it. And we were just going to let that go. And then it appeared at the front And of the sure enough, he emailed that over to us. Yep. And, you know, again, court, court order. Court order. Got to do what you got to do. Yeah. When's the next one? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. So I guess, you know, that'll be up to Pastor Barnaby. He gets one one at some point over the summer. Yeah. I mean, I can only imagine what he has to I say. I don't really know what he would have to say over the summer. You know, you got to give the guy credit, though. He's figured out how to take his cigar smoking and make it nonprofit. <laughs> and you know what? That is something that we should all aspire to. Yes. 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 So. The Church of the Holy Perdomo. I mean, it's working for him. Apparently. Somewhat. You really would think the IRS would look into that at some point. You'd but, think. Yeah, but so far, Who the knows? scam continues. <laughs> 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 well, guys, we really, really appreciate listening to us. Um, we had just a great month in March, and the numbers were awesome, and we can't thank you enough for tuning in and not only listening, but telling your friends. So now the bar is set, so you guys have to continue. Got to take it up a notch. Take it up a notch. That's right. Keep at it, so. Keep telling everybody and uh, spreading the word. The good word the good of word. the cigar. There you go. Well, guys, this has been another sermon from the Cigar Pulpit. I'm Nick. I'm Gator. Everybody stay safe and stay smoky. <laughs>